contravariance. So we're going to talk now about uh, contravariance. And specifically, I want to um, uh, build up some intuition uh, for for contravariance, uh, particularly at a programming level, but but also some at a categorical level. And, you know, I gave you a, a kind of a sneak preview of some of this uh, last time, but I I want to um, go through it a little bit more here. Um, so we've we've talked about functors as as structure preserving mappings, and and we've just gone over now some of their properties, the ways in which they uh, are structure preserving mappings, between categories that preserve identity morphisms and composition that honor composition. Uh, etc. And uh, I'm not going to go over that for this part of um, today's uh, today's lecture. But what I want to talk about is their role in lifting morphisms, um, and uh, and particularly connected with um, the programming use of functors. Um, it it. It bears emphasis that you know functors are allowed about the, the really interesting property of functors is it's not how they map morphisms oh sorry map um, objects but how they map morphisms that's where you know we we see structure uh, at issue and they have to preserve the structure and um We've noted that um, when we have a morphism in a source category and we map it with a functor, we talk about this lowercase uh, h, for example, being lifted by the action of this functor, functor capital F, to, to hit this arrow here. So h is lifted to an arrow here from the right-hand side. So if h was a mapping, let's say, of ints to bools that ask if you know an int is prime return true or false a boolean if we lift it with the list functor now it operates on lists of ints and turns them into lists of bools we've lifted it to operate on this functor level something that was operating only at the level of el elements mapping each int to a bool saying whether or not it's prime now we get something that maps whole lists of ints to lists of bools. And it carries over to things like maybes of ints, mapping that to maybe of bools, right? Or whole trees of ints to trees of bools, et cetera. Um, so we had the, the maybe functor, and we envision these as operating this category hask, where each object is a type. And the action of the functor maps from those types over on the left-hand side over into corresponding types on the right-hand side. So maps an int into a maybe event. So, so it takes may, or I, sh I, sh I shouldn't say it that way. It maps int, the type int, to, a, to the type maybe int. Things that could be ints, but could be nothing, right? Um, and here, morphisms between ints, right? Um, morphisms from ints to ints, for example, are, um, or excuse me, or something like is even or, or is prime that maps uh, a maybe, um, uh, maps an int to a bool. We lift that to become something that maps a maybe event to a maybe a bool. So this arrow here, just like, excuse me, this arrow H is lifted to go from, uh, you know, from, from B to C is lifted to go from F of B to F of C. And we call it FH, that's the, the lifting of it. So it is that is even from int to bool is lifted to go from maybe, so that's, the functor applied to int, which is maybe event, to the functor applied to bool, which is maybe a bool, 
it's this lifted functor, which maps maybe events to maybe a pools, right? And the lifting of this is pretty straightforward diagrammatically and conceptually, as Eric noted. So if we have a function from A to B, and that's important here, the directionality of this, then we can lift it to go from maybe of A to maybe of B. We we do we perform that lifting with what's called F map, right? And importantly, and for for our emphasis, um, maybe's contain A's. They've got an A or nothing, right? They have zero or more A's. And so here it's our maybe of A, and either it has an instance of type A, or it has nothing, which we write with bottom um, there. Um, excuse me. Ah, um, sorry. Ah. Um, and this lifted of lifting of is even maps maybe events to maybe of bool. So it maps if maybe of a if maybe event contains an n, we we ask is it even, and we get a maybe of bool. Or if it contains nothing, we get a nothing as a result. We can't do anything with it, and we just um, we just uh, return nothing um, within the, the maybe a pool. That's how lifting works for this functor. I think it should be common or you know comfortable. Now, similarly, with if we have in Hask and we have these types, we can hit them with an int or sorry list functor, right? And here uh, we lift. We're going to map uh, int to list event, bool to list of bool, and is even will be lifted. Is even goes between an int and a bool, and it will be lifted by the functor, mapped to by the functor to a morphism here between a list event and a list of bools. We have this way of taking whole lists of events and turning them into lists of bools, which just applies is even um, accordingly. So we have this functor from, you know, into bool and, and we lift it using fmap and we get uh, a function going from list of A to, to list of A, list of int to list of bools. And importantly, lists contain zero or more values of, in this case, list of ints uh, to map with F. And that's going to be uh, key. Okay, um, uh, so that's what fmap does. It lifts particular functions here, like from A to B, to now operate on this the map, the image of the the functor for the the corresponding source type and target type. I think that's all familiar to you. Um, so it maps each of these over. Very nice. Now the reader functor is an interesting piece. It maps uh, a given type over on the left to a to a type that takes in some fixed type. We often think of it as an environment, but some fixed type, and it returns the parameterized type. So int. So it lifts an int to an E arrow, to a function from, or to a type that describes functions from E, some fixed type E to it. It lifts bool to a type that describes functions from some fixed type E to bools. And it lists is even to, to something that maps and maps from something of type of function from E to fixed type E to int to something of fixed type E to bool. And we also think of it as as, as as kind of reading from the environment what the int is, but it can it can do other things. And 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 often categorically we use it in in other other ways like with representable functors. So here, if we have a functor from a function from A to B, for example, and Haskell using fmap, we can take an E, something that maps from a 
a fixed type um, to an A, and we can turn into something that reads in that fixed type and 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 takes it for and re returns a B. And the way in which we do that is pretty straightforward. We have this function being lifted. That's this thing down here, and we we have one of these given to us. Um, a function that takes a fixed type and, and has some fixed type in it, returns an A, and we want to give back one that we want to have a recipe that takes one of these and turns it into one of these. And the answer is, is pretty straightforward because we know how if we can get an A, all we have to do is hit it with this function being lifted, which maps A's to B's, and now we can return a B. And so it's it's simply post composition of this fun function. We we given one of these. All we have to do is hit it with one of these. After we we get our a and we can get a b. And so this thing f dot r is of type e. Yeah, it's a function that takes an e and and goes for a b. So r here is is of this type, takes an E and goes to an A, and F here is of uh, this type. And composing them in this way gives a function that um, um, will, uh, will, will map from E to B. So this is the definition of, of F map for reader. So here, if we have something given to us that goes from E to A, and we also have something that maps from uh, F to B, we can then build something that goes from E to B by just taking the thing that goes from, excuse me, E to A, hitting it with F, and then going to B. Okay. Um, now, the key thing I want to emphasize, I'm going through them one after the other, is that these are all covariant functors, okay? And... Uh, these are what we call covariate functors. We lifted a morphism for all of them, for A to B, to get something that goes from F A to F B. Mm -hmm. So we we lift if we have F prime from interval, we we lift it with F map for the list functor to go from list of int to list of bool. If we have F prime from interval. Um, and we lift it with the maybe functor, we go from maybe event to maybe a bool. Right. Um, if we have something that goes from into bool, we lift it with the reader functor. It goes from reader event to reader of bool. You notice I've colored these in a way that I'm being I'm being going to be consistent about it, so you can visually verify at a glance that you know it's magenta before blue on the left and it's magenta before blue on the right. And that's important because we're going to see some reorderings of that in just a few minutes, and I'm going to explain why. So, so here, um, I'm going to motivate this with one of these reader functors. Um, so, and 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 it's in a in a variant of it, a close cousin that requires different rules. Um, so we talked about how if we have one of these reader functors, if we have f of a is, um, is, is describes um, type from. E to A, um, uh, then if we have one of these maps from A to B, we can obtain a, an E to the B. So we are given one of these. This is a, a function mapping A to B. And we, we have one of these. Um, if, if we have one of these, how can we, how can we map this onto an F, F B? How do, we, how do we accomplish this? Well, it's, it's quite straightforward. We just do e to a first and and then post compose with that and we get e to b right that's how we can lift this to become an e to the b which is 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 what we're doing here that's how we can lift a reader event to a reader of bool with with this function from an into a bool that's what allows us to do it it's a jigsaw puzzle we have e to a and then we have A to B, and we stick them together in this way to get E to B. Great. But, 
But here's the question. Here's the close cousin that requires a different handling. Okay, so we, we just did this for the reader function. Now the, the question here is, okay, so suppose we, we again want to map this function. Or for all of these, we're mapping a function of type this. Okay, um, suppose now we have a functor that takes a type A and it maps that type A to a type A arrow E, not E arrow A. A arrow E. So this is a type. What does this type mean? Can someone tell me what is what does this type mean? If we have a let's suppose we have f of int, what is this describing? What are the types of functions that this is describing? They're functions that do what? If A is int, what are these? Uh it takes an int and produces something else. Yeah, some fixed type. That's right. And the question is, okay, if we have one of those, we'd like to do this sort of thing, right? We, if we have something that um, that uh, we have this sort of function and we we want to lift it to, to turn one of these guys into um, something with what Wilson said, we want to we want to map it to something that uh, turns an f of a into an f of b, right? That's that's exactly what we were doing here. We're mapping f of a's to f of b's by lifting this. So we want to do that here. And so we have one of these. This is this function, right? And then we have something that takes an a and it gives a, an e, as, as, as uh, Larissa said. So the question is, can we piece these together? So it's a jigsaw puzzle. Can you piece them together end to end in some sort of way that you can have something that maps a B to an E? Because that's what we want, right? We want something, we want to get out something that maps a B to an E. Can you do that here by putting these end to end? The answer is you cannot. Uh, yeah, sorry. Were you going to say something? No. Uh, yeah, I was going to say you can. Yeah, you, you can't do it. Um, but this is where contravariant functions come in. They live, they require a different handling. Um, using normal mapping, we, we can't fit these together. But what we can do is we can have a different variant of it. We can have a different, yeah, different, different, a, a variant. Of it. How does that work? Well, instead of having a function a to b, we could have a function b to a. Now that sounds backwards. We wanna we wanna map an f of of a to an f of b. You know we wanna we wanna turn an f of a to an f and map it to an f of b. But what I'm saying is to do that to do that work of mapping an f of a to an f of b. Well, to this point, we've been able to just lift functions from A to B to accomplish this, to map a, a list of ints to a list of bools. We've been able to use things that map into bools. To, to map a maybe of ints to a maybe of bools, we've been able to use functions to map from int to bools. Um, it's always been in the same order. Now we're going to get it in a, in a different order, going from B to A. You know, um, that's what we need, I'm, I'm saying, because because check it out. If we have something which goes from B to A and then something which goes from A to B, can you put these together, these two, in a way that gives you something from B to E? So if 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 I, I want to get, I have something, you know, F A is, is this uh, E to A and I want F B, which is going to be E to B. How can I get that? Um, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I want to. Um, uh, so this is what we can do. What we want here is we have f a. I'm sorry, a to e, and we want to get a b to e, a f of b. So how are we going to do that? How can we do it if we're if we're given one of these guys and we're given one of one of these guys? Um, how can we piece them together to get a b to e? Can anyone say what can we do? What can we do here to get a something from B to E? We want to map an F of A to an F of B. Um, um, how can we do it to get out Use an F of B going from B to E? Mm -hmm. Please. B, B 
to A will give us an A, and then we use that A to produce C. Exactly. And that gives us a B to E. So what this is saying is, don't abandon hope. I mean, you, you can map from an FA to an FB. Um, that, that's what we want to do in general. We want to map FA to FB. Um, and you can do it here, but you need different raw materials. Instead of being given an F, an F, F uh, instead of being given an A to a B, um, uh, like we, we have been here, we need to be given a B to an A. And that allows us, given an FA, we can get out an FB. But it's contravariant. It, it's, you'll notice it's in the, this kind of different, um, uh, different order, right? So this is emblematic of what are called contravariant functors. Um, uh, these are functors which are, are covariant in C op. So if we have a contravariant function from C, um, from C to D, it's a covariant functor, a kind of normal functor from C op to D, from the dual of C, okay? Um, and here, by taking the dual, remember the objects stay the same, but the morphisms are reversed. So we view them in the opposite direction, right? A morphism in C going from A to B, in C op, it goes from B to A. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and that's what we're going to be using here. Um, we're going to be taking in things that go from B to A uh, here instead of A to B. Okay. Um, so if you consider here that it's called contra map. Okay. Um, uh, and and it comes up in many practical cases. It comes up in category theory and it comes up in programming. Um, and the perhaps most simplest case is when we have this case of, of FA as this thing that consumes an A. But it also will come up at a more complicated level when we have a list of things that consume A, or maybe of things that consume, consume A. And again, we, we can't lift a function from A to B to give a mapping from FA to FB. Instead, we have to lift something that goes from B to A so we can perform this sort of jigsaw trick, right? Um, so with a covariant functor, we have F map, which lifts an A to B to, a front, to, to yield a function from FA to FB, right? It lifts an A to B to give us something that goes from lists of A to lists of B. So if we have int to bool, we get out a function by applying F map to that, um, to is prime, we get something out that gives us lists of ints to lists of bools. By contrast with contravariant functors, we have contra map. And that takes in something from B to A to get a mapping from FA to FB. Alternatively, you could think about it this way, which is what's kind of written here. Um, but it amounts to the to the same thing. Um, okay, so uh, we we end up seeing this um, in 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 many cases, and we 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 just saw it here. I'm going to show it diagrammatically. So here we we want to map an FA to an FB. So FA is A arrow B. It's, it's the type of functions that take an A and give back a V. And we want to tur turn it into type of functions that take a B and return back a V. And here we want to we want to implement this. We want to get one of these from one of these. So how do we do it? Well, we have a mapping from a B to A, um, and and that's going to, of course, allow us to, if we're given a B, we can hit it with this map, which will turn into an A, which we can process with this to get a V, and we can return a V as a result. Um, 
and uh, here's the co-reader functor, and and this allows us to go in this direction. You'll notice that here we're pre-composing with this. You may, you may remember the reader functor. We were a post-composing earlier. I don't know if you how well you remember that, but it, we're post-composing. We're doing this after we get one of these, so we could turn it into a B and return that B. So F is on the left. We're composing it with R on the left. Whereas here, F is on F is on the right. We're pre-composing this guy to get ourselves uh, an, an A, and then we can plug it into this thing that we have here, CR, the maps from A's to B's, and we could have as a net effect so that it takes a B and returns a V, right? We're just, that's what the dot is here. We're composing it, giving us the fact that it takes a B to an A and then that A to a V. So it's a contravariant functor. And, you know, given uh, we, we, we want one of these, so uh, we use F first. And so, so we're going to get a B. We're going to take a B. What, what's our implementation of B to V going to be? It's going to take a B. And whatever B we're given, we hit it with F. Right? That's what this is doing first. We hit it with F. And it's going to map it to an A. And then we perform this one we already have given, been given to us, that turns that into a V. And then we return the result. OK, now, one of the interesting things about this is and this comes up in category theory for a bit. It's not just a programming issue. It's a category theory issue that certain things are from our contravariant functors. And one way that you reason about these is by thinking to figure out if something is a contravariant functor or a covariant functor, you look at how it's defined in terms of what position things are in and and you have, may have to do it recursively and um if you just have a single level you ask is it in a positive position it's something that's being returned or produced um or if it's in a negative position it's something that's being sought that's being taken as an argument it's in a negative position um, that's if you have a single level of, of functor. And if you have nested types, then you you have this kind of rule of signs to, to multiply them. So here, X, if, if we have a functor, like uh, I'm going to, ah, I'm going to say, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to say we have functor uh, F applied to x. I'll just use that Haskell notation. I'm oh, sorry, that Scala notation. Um, here, this is in a positive domain. We, we've got it. We've got something of type x. That If it's if it's of type x, we, we have it. x plus 1, we have it. It's depending on x, and we, we have it. Maybe of x, well, yeah, we, we have it or we have nothing, but we have it in hand. A pair of x and y, yeah, we We've got x, so we lift it with an a of an x to a to a z. If we want to turn this into a z cross y, here it's also positive. It's being produced, being produced, not being taken as an argument, but being produced. It's in a positive position. We're getting it. We're getting a value of that type, an active value. We're going to have it. We're going to have it. We're going to have it, or have nothing, and, and so on here. But here it's in a negative position. We need it. We don't have an X. We need to be given an X. We have a whole of type X, right? Um, something that needs an X. We don't have it. No, we, we need it. So it's in the negative position. And it turns out that makes all the difference for whether we need a contra map or an F map. Right? We, it's not like we have it, like in a, a list of X, we have it and we can map it over for each such value, can map it over to a value of type Z. 
you know, we're given a list of ints, we can ask if each of them is prime and get a list of pools. No, no, it's not like that. It's here. We we need an we need a value of type X. And it's not like we can hit it with this this value up front. No, we 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 need it. And that's gonna make the difference between um uh, requiring a, a contravariant functor. Here, X is in a positive position. And it's, it's, oh, excuse me, excuse me. It's in a negative position. It's something that's needed. Um, that's that's really bad. Um, uh, this would be a, a, a positive uh, one here if it... If if this guy were int to uh, this, now it's being produced. We're we're going to be we're, we're going to have one in hand that we can do something with instead of needing one. Here it's needing one, so it's 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 a list of this. We don't have x's. We have a whole bunch of things that have holes of type x, so we need them. We're going to need to use contramap to to sort of um, given another if we want something that takes of type Z instead going to int we're going to need something if if that's what we want to have a list of one of those um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a Z take have a whole of type Z and then we're going to map uh, and and then we need something that can turn Zs into Xs to give us, uh, to be able to use this one that we've been given. And uh, that's something which is contravariant rather than something that turns X's into Z's. Um, and this is not in a, I don't know when, what I was doing there, I was, yeah, this is in a uh, negative position. So um, it, these are things like holes that need one, that need one to be given. All these ones are ones that will get one. It has it now, or it will produce it, and we'll be able to do something with it, map it to another type. These, we need things like to give us an X. Um, and if we want to turn this into something that needs a Z, we need to be able to map Zs to X so we can use um, this one to produce it. So this is this notion of negative or positive positions. And if you have things that are embedded, like here we have something that's uh, in a negative position. So if we put it inside a list, which is itself positive, but we if we put inside something like a list of X's to ints, the net effect is negative uh, because we're not going to, if we want to map X to be Z, um, we're not going to be able to just go through with something that maps X to Zs and apply it to each of the contents of this list. No, we need something that maps Zs to X to produce something that's mapping list to produce a list of Z to to ints. Is is what I'm saying like does this does this make some Sense? Are you getting any sort of sense of what's a negative position or positive position here? Mm -hmm. Thoughts? So this is kind of the most elemental level. This is level one for a single level. And then if we embed it in another structure, its position here interacts with its position in the in the structure um, uh, in which it's embedded. Um, and they could cancel out. So if we had like, if we had this sort of thing, um, if if we needed, if we had x here going to int and then going to bool like that, uh, now it would be in a positive position because 
This by itself is negative position for x. And we're thinking about how do we map x to a z? Well, okay, um, how, how do we map it from being one of these of x to one of these of z's? Well, um, here we have a, uh, x is in a negative position in this, but in this overall one, this whole thing here is in a negative position. As a result, this turns turns out to be in a positive position. Um, negative, negative makes a, a positive. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, if the arrow points to A, then A is in a positive position. Negative otherwise. Yeah, but sometimes there's not there's not arrows. Yes, it's really in a function type that here it's negative position because we need it. We don't have it. We need it. We need it to be provided to us. We have a hole waiting for an X. It's not that we have one and can map it to a Z. It's that we need to be given one. And one has to be made for us. Um, and so if we need to turn this into from an X, something that takes an X in and, and gives us an int to something that takes a Z in and takes an int. We can't just map the X to a Z, no. If we need something that takes a Z in and maps an int. And, and uh, it, so if we have one of these and we want to turn into something that takes a Z in and maps an int, what that thing that takes a Z in needs to do is have a map from Z, the thing it gets, gets given to X so that then we can use this one. Um, and uh, and so they end up, um, this is something that's in the negative position because we need to use contra map. We need something that goes in the reverse uh, direction. Now, what I was saying though is that this is kind of tied up with some intuition um, and we use these this intuition a fair bit in our daily life, I would argue. But we almost don't notice it. So um, think about cooking. Think about cooking. Suppose you have a, a recipe that describes how to take some kind of raw ingredients or some ingredients here, and it turns and you can produce an omelet. And we want to create a recipe um, we want to be able to perform a recipe that takes all those same ingredients as the inputs, but it doesn't create just a, a, a whole omelet. It cross slices it and puts a, a sriracha sauce on it, this type of so spicy sauce. Um, um, so, so we have something that goes from C to A. That's these C is the ingredients, and it produces an omelet A. And we want to have something that goes from C, these ingredients to B. My question is, what do we what do we need in order to go if if this is what we have for a recipe, what do we need to add to it to have a recipe for this? Do we need a way of turning a whole omelet into a cross slice omelet or sriracha sauce? So that goes from an A to a B? Or do we need something that goes from a B to an A? Something that turns a cross sliced omelet into A. So this is, we have access to this and we're looking to create a recipe for this. What do we need? Something goes from B to A or A to B? Can anyone say? What do we need in order to, to get what we want, which is a recipe that will go give us a cross sliced omelet? What do we, what do we need? Mm -hmm. A to B. A to B is exactly right. Yeah. We know how to get an omelet as an output, and we want to get we want to do further processing on that omelet to get a to get a to get you know something that's cross sliced. So we need something downstream, something goes from A to B. So this post compose with this, right? Uh, we have something that goes from C to A, and we need something that goes from C to B. So all we do is we post compose with something from A to B that takes our our omelet and chops it up. Um, and, and so that's exactly right. And this is like F of A and F of B. Um, and all we do is we post compose with that. We take, we follow the original recipe. Ah, 
and we follow it with F to get across the isomeral. I think it should be pretty intuitive for that. Do you get that? Do people understand that? Are, are people comfortable with that at an intuitive level? What's going on here? Anyone? Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know if you can see, we're all giving you thumbs up uh, oh, reactions. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, <laughs> thanks. I, I can't see that. Thanks. Um, okay, now, now I'm going to have a variant of this example. Okay, now we're going to have A and B on the opposite side. C is going to be produced. So suppose we have a, a recipe that has some original ingredients that it includes extracted egg whites. Mm -hmm. Um, and we want to produce a whole omelet in both cases, okay? Um, so we have a recipe that starts with these ingredients, including extracted ed whites. That's our original recipe, just like it was before, okay? Um, but now we instead want to create a different recipe. We want to have a recipe th that writes down, we want to start with whole eggs. So the only difference is we're going to start with whole eggs instead of egg whites. Um, um, and, and so I'm asking, what, what do we need to do this? Do we, do we need, so, so this is, uh, A and, 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 and these, these ingredients, and these are, these ingredients are B. They're the things we need. They're the things we have to start with, the things that we consume, right? These are the things consumed here. This is consumed. This is consumed. We don't have it. It's consumed by our, in this case, our recipe. These are consumed. And we want something that is consumed that starts with whole eggs instead of egg whites. Of course, we know um, how to get egg whites from whole eggs, but we want a recipe that starts with this. So what do we need to do? If we want to create a recipe that starts with this instead of that, what do we need to do? Do we need a way of turning chopped tomatoes, sliced cilantro, and egg whites into whole tomatoes plus cilantro and whole eggs? Do we need a way of turning this into this, or do we need a way of turning this into that? What do you think? So we, we, we have this already. A friend has given it to us, and we want to write down a recipe that starts with whole eggs. That Tony, gives, mm -hmm. Tony said in the... Uh huh. Uh, chat ATP. Um. Oh. I suspect it's the the um turning this into that. Yeah, because you you want a recipe that will start with this. It consumes this, and it's going to produce this from it, and then we can use this original recipe. All we need to do is basically have. If we have this recipe given to us, all we need to do is to add something at the beginning of it that says how to turn whole eggs into egg whites. That's 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 what we need to. We need to turn into egg whites. So, so what I'm what I'm saying here is like the original recipe is this. This is what we want. Something that takes whole eggs and turns it into an omelet, which in both cases are called C. And and how are we going to do that? Well. We're going to take our original recipe, which takes egg whites and gets out an omelet, and we're going to tack on at the beginning something that starts with whole eggs and 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 gives and gives us egg whites. So we talk it on, uh, we tag it on the beginning. And what's important here is we have one of these. We want to get one of these, um, but instead of giving something that goes from A to B, the things that are consumed saying that we, we want to map these into these. Now we, we have to go the other way. It's contravariant. We need to go from something that starts with whole eggs because it's an input. It's a consumed thing. It's used by it. It has to be given to it. Um, we have to start with that, map to the things that we, we start with for this recipe, and then we can use that recipe and get something here. So if we want a B to C, and we're given an A to C. We can't map the A to a B because we don't. Oh, these are the things that are consumed. We have to say what we will start with here for B and map them into A so we can use this. 
So here we're pre-composing with F. We're, we're doing F first, and that requires us to map this into this input. This is the input for the recipe. And we need to map this input into this input so we could use this recipe. Here, we had the outputs, right? That, that was the, the difference here. Here we were operating on the outputs. We, were, we had a whole omelet and we want to turn it into a cross slice op omelet. So we need to do downstream composition with the outputs where we have uh, you know something we need to map an A to a B. Here we need, because we're dealing with the inputs, we need to a, a B to an A. We need to turn these inputs into these inputs and that allows us to use this because we're dealing on the input side. This is why this is negative. We're dealing with the input side, the things that are consumed, the whole, we have a whole H-O-L-E of size of, of type X. These are the things that are consumed. And so it needs contra map to turn an X, something that takes an X as an input and gives us an inch. If we wanna turn that to something that takes a Z as an input. So if we have something that takes an X as an input and gives us an inch, and we wanna turn it into something that takes an X as Z as an input, it gives an inch. We have to take that Z, how we can do it is take that Z in and then turn it into an X, not X to Z, Z to X, and then turn that into an int with this original thing. That's what we do, okay? Um, uh, so we need a, a B to A here. Okay, here, here's another example. Suppose we have access to an existing library and, and, and that takes as input a text file and it outputs a PDF file rendering the text, okay? So um, it takes in a text file and it puts out a PDF file. And we're seeking to build a system, a software system that takes in a text file, same, same source, and it outputs a PNG file instead of a, of a, of a, of a PDF file. What do we need to do? So, so, you know, you already have access to a library that can take text files and put them on as PDFs. And, and you want to build a system uh, that takes a, a text file in and outputs a PNG. What do you need? Do you need something that converts from PNGs to PDFs or something that converts PDFs to PNGs? You tell me, what do, what do we need? If this is what you have and you you have access to it in a library, and now you want to build something, it takes a text file and outputs a PNG, what do you need? Is it this one or this one? The first one. The PNG first one. PNG. Yeah, yeah. You're dealing with the output. You have something that can give you as output, a PDF file, and you just need to turn it at, at, as an output, uh, a, 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 a PNG. So you need something that will map from PDFs to PNGs, right? Um, and and the solution here is 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 pretty uh, pretty pretty simple. I'm sorry, it's this one here. So we have this. This is what's given to us. We want this. How do we do it? We need to post compa post uh, compose so that it turns PDFs into PNGs, just like that. Right, that's what we need. We have this, uh, we have access to already through a library, and all we need to do is use it and, and extract the PNG file. That's all. Mm -hmm. Familiar, we're dealing with the output, we're dealing with output, it's covariant. We need something that goes from A to B. We wanna turn a C to A to a C to B, we just need something that goes from A to B. The co-example, really it should be called co-example, not example co. I'm going to call it co-example. There we go. Um, the co-example. Um, uh, here, we have access to an existing library that takes as input a PDF file. That's type A. 
and it outputs a text file giving its textual contents. It extracts the text from this PDF. And instead, we're, we're seeking to build a system that takes a PNG as an input, that's type B, and outputs a text file. So the output is the same between these two, but we have access to something that takes a PDF in and give us our text. And now we have a PNG file we want to take in as input. A PNG, mm -hmm. um, uh, which, what do we need to build it? If, if we want to build the system out of this, and we have this as a building block, if, if we want to take in a PNG file, we want to take that as input and an output text. And what we have access to is someone gave us, or gave us, point us to a library which takes in a PDF and gives us the output. What can we do? to build our system that takes in a PNG? What do we do? Anyone? Uh, we take PNG and then turn it to PDF. Yeah. And then we can use this library, right? And extract uh, a textual file. Do you see that? Do people understand that? So as Tony says, exactly. The solution is prepend with F. What we have given to us takes it requires so so we have this library it requires a PDF to extract the text. We well, want to have something that takes as input a PNG and extracts text to build the top of this. We need to turn our input, the input we get, the thing we consume, the thing that we need, the hole that we have, which is for a PNG. We need to turn what we're given into the thing that this other thing needs as input. So we need to turn a PNG into the PDF and then we can get the text. But do you see here, this is contravariant, right? Because we're dealing with the inputs. We're gonna get in a PNG and we will have to turn it into an input. It's not gonna go from A to B. No, it's not like, we have a PDF and we need to turn it into a PNG. That's what we had in this previous one, right? Um, we, we had it here. We need it as inputs. And so we, we're going to turn a B to an A. We, we need to get this in and we need to turn it to this because it's an input. It's the thing we start with for this library. So it's the domain of this library. Here, here PDF earlier was the codomain, right? It was the output, so we post-pend it. Here it's the input, it's the domain, so we pre-pend it. Are we okay with that? What are people thinking? Hmm? Okay. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Okay, great. Um, okay, well, maybe... I'll, I'll, I'll uh, okay, here, here's a, here's a travel services. We have access to an existing flight. We know there's a flight from Seattle to Calgary, and we're seeking to arrange travel from Seattle to Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. So we know there's a flight from Seattle to Calgary, and we want to go from Seattle to Saskatoon, all the way to Saskatoon. Um, what do we need if we want to go from Seattle to Saskatoon? Do we need a way of going from Calgary to Saskatoon? If we want to use this flight that we know about from Seattle to Calgary, do we need a way to go from Calgary to Saskatoon? Or do we need a way from getting Saskatoon to Calgary? <laughs> right? It's, we want Calgary to Saskatoon. Calgary to Saskatoon, yeah. Um, uh, we, it's kind of, uh, we need to go, we, we want to go from Seattle to, so we know there's a flight from Seattle to Calgary. And, and if we want to go Seattle to Saskatoon, we go through, uh, we, we just need to take this flight. And then we um, get the output of that flight, which is Calgary, and take it into the input of the next flight. So we need to go from Calgary to, to Saskatoon. That's exactly right. Um, uh, we need to go Seattle to Calgary and Calgary to Saskatoon. So we post-compose with this. Calgary is a, is a 
is an output from this one. It's it's the result that comes from it. Um, uh, it it's the post condition of it, and we map it to Saskatoon, right? Um, so we need we need to go from A to B. Mm. It's it's in the positive position. It's being produced by this first one, this situation, this this uh, set of circumstances of being in Calgary is being produced by this first one, and and we use it um, as as the input for the next one. Okay. Now the co-example for this is suppose there's a existing flight from Calgary. Calgary to Seattle, um, and we are want to go from Saskatoon to Seattle. What do we need to get from Saskatoon to Seattle? If we have a flight from Calgary to Seattle, um, where Calgary is A and Seattle is C, um, and we're seeking to arrange travel from Saskatoon to Seattle, in other words, B to C, what do we need to do here? If we want to get from Saskatoon to Seattle, and we know there's a flight from Calgary to Seattle, what do we need to, to do? Now, Saskatoon is on the input side. It's the prerequisite. It's, it's the thing we need, the precondition that we need to have in place. And we know there's a, another flight from Calgary to Seattle, so the precondition for that is being in Calgary. So what do we need? Do we need something that gets us from Calgary to Saskatoon? to take advantage of this? Or do we need something that goes from Saskatoon to Calgary? Something goes from B to A. What do you think? Uh, we want Saskatoon to Calgary. Saskatoon to Calgary. Yeah. We're in Saskatoon. That's our precondition. We, we're in Saskatoon. We want to be able to use this precondition of going from of this other flight going from which is going for Calgary. So we have to produce that precondition from ours. So we need a way of going to Saskatoon to Calgary. That's exactly right. Um uh there. And so here it's we have to prepend with this and it's contravariant, right? We even though we we want to get the thing that goes to Saskatoon to to Seattle, we can't just map Calgary to Seattle to Saskatoon. No, that wouldn't make sense. We're taking as a as a requirement a precondition you know we're going to be in Saskatoon we have to get to the precondition of this one so it's on the input side it's on the side of needing the inputs to be ready to go to to be in Calgary and we're having an input of starting in in, in Saskatoon so it's it's this is a uh, contravariant we're going from B to A even though what we want is a B to produce it, we want a B to C. To produce that from an A to C, we need something that goes from B to A in the opposite direction, right? It's the opposite direction. Even though we want the B to C, we don't want to produce it by going A to B. No, we mean B to A. Um, so we can use this, which requires it as a precondition. Or finally here, for language translation, suppose we have a spoken language translator that can translate from English to Chinese. Uh, Mandarin Chinese, let's say, um, going from C to A. Um, uh, so English is C. And we, we're seeking to translate from English into Thai. Um, what, what what do we, what can we do? Well, okay, we, we have this one that can go English to Chinese, and we want to go English to Thai. What do we need? Do we need a translator from Chinese into Thai or Thai into Chinese? Mm hmm what do you think? Chinese to Thai. Chinese to Thai, because it's the output. We're like we're getting Chinese out, and we want to get Thai out. So we want to post pen the output from this guy, Chinese output, to to get out the output we want, Thai. So so it's it's at the end things. It's the downstream. It's it's. It's dealing with the post condition. By contrast, suppose that we have a translator that can go from Chinese into English. We're seeking to translate from Thai into English. How do we do that? So that's A to C. And we we want we want from B to C, from Thai to English. Do we need someone? Do we need so we want we have an A to C, we want a B to C. 
do we get it by going from an A to B? In other words, from someone who can go from Chinese into Thai, or do we want it from Thai into Chinese? Thai is the input here. We want to take it in. It's a precondition. It's the thing we need to go from Thai. Um, um, so do we want to go B to A or A to B? Or we want Thai to Chinese. You want know, from Thai to Chinese, yeah. Because because if if we want this, if 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 we can get that on the input, that mapping of the input, we can use this translator. So this this existing service. So we want to map Thai to Chinese, and that will then allow us to use this service. And 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 again, we 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 have an A to A to C. We want a B to C, and it's tempting to think. We just need to turn the A into a B, but no, we need to turn the B into an A in order to implement this, in order to take a B in and manufacture an A so we can feed into here and get a C. We need something that goes the other direction. That is what we need. And that is contravariance. And that comes up in category theory because it comes up and all sorts of circumstances where we don't really think about it appearing. You know, I, I doubt many of us have thought about this, right? You know, in daily life, but it's a it's a common common circumstance. And I give some other other um other examples. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah, I don't I don't uh yeah, yeah, we're not gonna cover that. Okay, so so that's contravariance, and it matters um, at a practical level. We cannot take something that's, you know, an int, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, an A to an int and turn it into a bool to an int by mapping ints to bools. Um, no, we need something that, that uh, if, if we want to get out, if we want to produce a bool to an int, um, and we're given an uh, an, an what am I saying? Sorry. <laughs> we have something that maps from A to an int, and we want to, if that's what we're given, and we, we want to produce something that maps uh, from A to a bool, then we're going to need to, uh, to have a, a downstream mapping. So if we want something that maps from A to a bool, um, and we already have something that maps from A to an int, we need a downstream thing that will go from an int to a bool and, and, and produce that for us. Uh, uh, if, by contrast, we have something that, that takes, a, uh, takes something as input and, and goes, we need, we need the opposite direction. So here, it depends whether it's on the negative position or the positive position, whether it's something we're taking in as input, um, if we're taking it in as input uh, and we want to turn it into an input of the other thing, uh, we're, we're dealing with a contravariant situation. If we're taking, if we're producing it as output and we want to produce something else as output, we're downstream and we'll take a covariant mapping line. That's the basic logic associated with this. And as I say, it, it does come up theoretically, but it also comes up in daily life if we were to stop to think about it. Okay, well, um, we've gone for almost two hours now. Um, and I wanna thank you for your flexibility with this and being able to meet here um, remotely in the absence in, in person. I am going to be posting more resources uh, tonight, and uh, I will be in touch to schedule a makeup meeting for our final session. Um, and uh, for that final session, it'll be sometime next week. Um, my guess is that it will be uh, uh, someday after Wednesday of next week, Thursday or Friday. But it could be as early as Tuesday, in which case it might be in person, depending on the situation here. I will be back there on Monday to deliver my final exam for CPT 394. Um, 
But for this, I'd like to read a chapter of, of great significance and that in a certain way should be satisfying. And that's chapter 22. That, ladies and gentlemen, is on natural transformations. Okay. So let's let's read that for next time. And really that will complete a triad of key material. Categories, functors, and natural transformations are arguably the three most important concepts in category theory. I think they'll be widely agreed. Interestingly, there are different parties who will argue, for example, that functors are the most important concepts in category theory, or that will argue that natural transformations are the most important concepts in category theory. And so by getting natural transformations, you'll have surveyed the, the three key concepts. And what's beautiful about it is it will link in with um, some other concepts we've been dealing with. This notion of naturality should hopefully come very naturally to you after much of what you've uh, seen. And um, I think you'll find elements of it familiar already, and you'll find it very hopefully satisfying to see certain things finally linked up um, uh, in the context of uh, of categories and functors. Natural transformations, in a word, are, are natural ways of going from one functor to another. They are, in short, mappings, structure-preserving mappings between functors. Okay? Um, great. That's all for today. I'm going to go down and uh, check how things are going downstairs. Thank you for your accommodation, and I'll be in touch uh, about the makeup class, okay? Thank you, everyone. Take care there, and I'll also be announcing some of those discussion groups. Take care.